Hello folks and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about my top tips for binding if you have nipple piercings. Now I'd like to start off right off the bat by acknowledging that it is really important to understand if you're binding with nipple piercings, healed or unhealed, that it can cause migration and rejection. I know that's not the news anyone wants to hear and it's not the best news, but I do wanna be really upfront and honest with folks because unfortunately I have a lot of people who message me who didn't know that and they end up dealing with migration and rejection and the scarring that comes along with it. And those scars can affect future top surgery plans and they're oftentimes really disappointed um, that this is kind of the situation that they're in. So I wanna be really upfront that if you're choosing to bind with nipple piercings, there's definitely some added risks. Now let's get into some actual logistics. So when we're talking about binding, there's different forms that people can use to bind. The most common is going to be wearing binders. So it's a stretchy athletic fabric that's designed to provide compression and compressed the tissue of the chest or of the breast down and in such a way that it flattens it. There's all sorts of different binders out there that are made with different fabric types and different levels of compression and different binders are going to be comfortable and work for different bodies or be uncomfortable and not work for other bodies. So a big portion of binding in general, but especially binding if you have piercings, is making sure you're finding a binder that works for you. If you're binding and it is always really uncomfortable or it hurts your back or it's difficult to breathe, please try a different binder. Do some experimentation and figure out what binders are going to be comfortable for you and for your body. For example, the brand GC2B is a really fantastic brand and my binder from them gets me as flat as possible. But on days where I'm working in the studio or I'm doing a lot of physical activity, the binder ends up getting pretty tight on me, especially in the armpit area. It can be really uncomfortable and the fabric is not the most comfortable in this area for me. The Girlfriend Collective Binder Bra is much less compressive for me than my GC2B binder, but it's really comfortable in the armpit area and the fabric is a lot more forgiving in this area as well. So your mileage may vary. Please experiment with different binders and different comfort levels. Now when we're talking about using a binder to bind, we are again using that compressive athletic fabric and that compression will oftentimes put compression directly on our piercings. That constant compression from wearing a binder and also sometimes the chafing and rubbing that can happen between the binder and the piercings is part of what can cause migration and rejection. I mean, imagine it, if you've got your piercing and all day long there is something pressing on it really hard and then sometimes rubbing against it, it kind of makes sense that that could cause the jewelry to start to want to push forward and migrate out. There are some things you can try and do to minimize that, the biggest of course being finding a binder that fits well for you and is comfortable. The other tip I would suggest is using eye patches to try and help minimize the amount of pressure on your piercing. So what I mean by that is you can get hard vented eye patches, um, either like a hard fabric with like a cardboard shell or a hard plastic online. And depending on the type and style of binder you're wearing, you can either sew these into the inside of the binder or hot glue them into the inside of the binder, whatever works. And using that allows the compression and the pressure to be spread out over the top of the eye patch and kind of removes that pressure from being as difficult for your piercings to deal with. Now depending on the type of binder you're using and the way you decide to adhere the eye patches, sometimes you can kind of see them through tighter clothing. So this trick does tend to work better, uh, A, if you're pretty careful with how you apply the eye patch to the binder, and B, you either wear an undershirt or a looser shirt over it. But it is very beneficial to a lot of my clients who have worried about this causing them to have to retire their nipple piercings. Another thing you can try is using nursing pads to kind of help alleviate some of the pressure from your nipple piercings. These you can typically find in like Walmart or Target in the baby section um, and you can just tuck them after you get your binder on into the area over your piercings and just use them for a little extra protection. 
but I will be honest if you're planning on binding and you have nipples pierced I would do a lot of extra monitoring for migration and rejection this is a very high risk when it comes to binding with nipple piercings and I would say the majority of my clients who try binding who have nipple piercings do eventually end up needing to take the nipple piercings out it's pretty rare that I see a client who ends up being to bind and keep their nipple piercings I'm not saying that it's impossible I just want to be really honest and upfront with y'all about the risk and I say this I don't wear nipple piercings anymore they are just simply not conducive for binding whatsoever for me um, and as long as I am still actively binding I'll not be getting them re-pierced uh, just because I it will just not work and I do not want to deal with migration. I don't want to deal with rejection. I don't want to deal with that pain and discomfort and I really don't want to deal with that scarring on my nipples. For me, that would make my dysphoria a lot worse. Um, so none of those piercings for me, not while I'm binding. Now a way that you can monitor for signs of rejection and migration is really easy and it's just through taking pictures. Before you start binding, go ahead and take a picture of your piercing and then I would take a picture every two weeks following and if you notice from these pictures that the skin over your jewelry is getting thinner and the jewelry is working its way to the surface or you're starting to see some consistent irritation building up, it may be time to pull and remove the piercings. And if you're not sure, I would follow up with a piercer who has experience working with clients who are binding and who are trans in order to figure out what the best option will be for you. Now there are other forms of binding that people use as well, trans tape being another really popular one. With trans tape, it's an adhesive, kind of like a sports tape that you can tape to the area and pull things aside or back. Uh, and even if you don't have piercings, um, please cover your nipple. <laughs> when you use trans tape because there's too many stories about people really hurting themselves with the adhesive. Um, so you're going to want to cover your nipple anyway. Using some extra coverage to protect the nipple piercings is really smart. You don't want all that adhesive to get caught up on your jewelry or on your piercing. That can definitely cause a lot of irritation uh, and you don't want to accidentally tear or rip the piercing with the adhesive or with the tape. So please use some form of cover. Um, I think using an eye patch underneath those like uh, little like pasties or the little like like chicken cutlet nipple covers uh, tends to work really well and help minimize that risk. Uh, but you really need some form of protective layer that's very secure between the tape and your nipple piercing. If you do not have that, you can tear these piercings if you use trans tape. Because I feel like it, I have to mention it in this video just to make sure I'm being super thorough and safe. Um, please don't ace tape bind. Please be really careful if you're doing like double sports bras or a sports bra and binder. Um, please just really do your research and make sure you're being safe with binding. You don't want to accidentally cause yourself any harm or any damage by binding incorrectly. Now when it comes to the piercing side of things, there is a little bit of advice that can make this easier. And the first one and the biggest, don't bind with unhealed nipple piercings. Um, the risks of migration and rejection are already really high if you're binding with nipple piercings. They're even higher if the piercings are not fully healed yet. Um, so if at all possible, I would wait to bind until your piercings are very well healed. Another big piece of advice is that larger gauge piercings do tend to be more stable and more durable when it comes to dealing with something like binding. So wearing your nipple piercings at a 12 gauge, you're going to have a lot more success and a lot more stability than say a 14 or a 16 gauge. At those thin sizes, you're definitely going to see more migration and more rejection. So if you're interested in binding, either get pierced at a 12 gauge or work with a piercer who's informed on these issues to see about potentially stretching you to a 12 gauge for that added stability. Even if you have very well healed piercings, they still can become irritated from wearing binders, from the compression, from buildup of like sweat and dirt and debris inside the binder, depending on the fabric type or from the friction. So if you are binding, you may want to treat your nipple piercings like they're new piercings again, clean them more often, use saline on them, really baby them and really be gentle and careful with them. I wish I was coming into this video with like a magical answer on how to bind safely with nipple piercings uh, because like I mentioned I don't wear nipple piercings anymore and binding is a huge factor in that for me uh, and I trust me I would love to I miss the piercings um, but I would bind for like two weeks and these things would start migrating my anatomy is just I'm built different. Um, so I do wish there was like a magical piece of advice or magical cure all I could give you, but unfortunately there's just not. Binding puts a lot of compression on these piercings and I do see it cause a lot of migration and a lot of rejection and sometimes it does leave very severe scarring. I have had clients who have informed me that this scarring has affected their top surgery results. 
so I always want to be honest with you. I always want to be straightforward, even though it's not the news that I want to hear or most folks want to hear. Please be really cautious and really mindful if you're deciding to bind with your nipple piercings. Definitely discuss your goals for your chest with yourself, your therapist, and any of your future doctors or surgeons. And if you're concerned that doing this may affect you negatively with your surgical goals or other goals down the line, it may be safer for you to remove the piercings for now. If you have any other questions when it comes to binding and nipple piercings, please leave them down in the comments below. And if there is anything else that you would like to see me talk about related to this subject, let me know. As per usual, if you like my content and you like the information I put out, please hit like and subscribe. Your support means so much to me. And I look forward to sitting down and chatting with you more about these topics soon. Have an awesome day. Bye.